the wrong one. You're on now. Are we live? Yes. Okay. So it's five. Oh, I forgot my ring. Oh, well. Welcome, everybody. Um, I'm Leanne, and this is our eighth in a series of the Art of the Garnish. It was the, um, what I call the COVID cocktail party because we were all uh, staying at home. But then I thought today, you know, we are progressing and making some some progress. I know it's very different if you've lost a loved one. So first I want to thank our first responders, the um, EMTs, the firemen, the policemen, all the, of course the home the healthcare workers in the hospital and, uh, and, and our superintendents and people in the buildings, you know, in New York. So um, it was just a nice homage in the newspaper, you know, to them. But I changed the title a little bit today, so I called it SIT, so I think I'm being quite clever because it stands for sheltering in place. So um, we still, uh, you know, since the pandemic started, we are drinking a lot more. I think they said it's up 55%. Um, so I'm glad you're doing your part. So um, welcome for those of you who don't know me. I'm Leanne. I'm the author of The Art of the Garnish. And the Hamptons and Long Island homegrown cookbook and uh, I write about the food and the drink because uh, well, especially with the cocktails all the spirits come from plants and this is uh, what's close to my heart so I'm an author I'm a horticulturist I'm a garden designer um, and I also design tablescapes um, really beautiful tabletops uh, compositions for different occasions and seasons. And uh, I not only do them for myself and my garden design clients locally, but I also can do by subscription um, because I just love entertaining and that's really what it's all about. So to use those things that you have or to create seasonal uh, displays, I think is just you know really all about what entertaining is all about. So I know in years past, sometimes my relatives, you know, they'd say, don't do fancy, don't do fancy. <laughs> but I think when you love your family and your friends, you, you want to uh, do something special for them, you know, so you want to make that, that display. So in the past couple weeks, I've tried to bring in part of our garden and um, use the, the book as the inspiration for some of the cocktails, but also riff a little bit. So a couple weeks ago, we did a, um, a tulip blossom um, uh, garnish. Uh, last week we did lots of lilacs both in the ice cubes and in the garnish itself and uh, this week I wanted to uh, do the apples so uh, these are all uh, beautiful leaves from the apple tree uh, out front um, I have an espalier uh, the female apple that bears the fruit and in the back in our little mini orchard um, I have the male apple for there so uh, here, it's so fragile, so I saved the last one because the blossoms are of the apples, so I really didn't wanna take too much of them, but you'll see the white here is beautiful, the apple blossoms. So you can eat the apples. I mean, they're very good for you. Um, obviously, apple picking season is at the end of the summer and into the autumn, but now it's apple blossom time, so I thought I would share that. The, the leaves and the um, apple blossoms are very high in antioxidants, and you can use them um, to make teas, you can put in flavored jellies, you can uh, flavor your vodkas, and, um, or obviously you can use as a garnish. So it's better to use the fresh young ones. You know, I pruned this the other day. Like a light almost like a bergamot taste, you know, a little bit, like in some ways a little bit citrusy. Um, but I'm, uh-oh, I want to get two things. Did you put the ice in there? I did. Oh, oh yes, yeah, say hi, Bill. You hi, Bill. Am, uh, Marty Scorsese. All right. So first, I'm, uh, I guess I got to tell you the story first. See, I'm a storyteller. So a lot of the drinks were inspired not only by the garden, the garden to glass, but the story's behind them. So today, the reason why I picked this, I cannot tell a lie that's in the book, um, but it comes from Applejack, Laird's Applejack. So this is the owner of the first distillery in America. I think it goes from the 1600s. So I'll read the background to you when I, um, when I make my drink. 
uh, but Laird's uh, is here, so I'm, I'm very proud because it's um, right here in Monmouth County in New Jersey, and um, that inspired um, George Washington. So he liked the apples so much that he asked for the apples and the recipes and things. So this is a, a, a brandy drink. It has, has lots of fun, fun history to it. And I like it because I think the Applejack pairs so well with other flavors. So normally I would have made this simple syrup with this, but I couldn't locate the um, caramel extract, but this is very good. So you can use this also. And in the book I have, uh, I suggest the Fee Brothers, the chocolate bitters, but that was before I knew Modern Bar Cart. So they, they are terrific. I was on a podcast with them. We'll have to do it again, but can you see this, the chocolate, the chocolate bitters that go into it? So, and then there's um, apple seltzer. This one has apple and ginger in it. Um, so I'm gonna make that first and then we'll talk a little bit about bar carts and things. But this is the first drink that I've made that has, um, that's not, uh, I do love up drinks because they're pure. And also, I just love the glasses that go with them. But this is, that's too big. <laughs> but this is our wedding crystal. And you can see if Bill can zoom in on it, but maybe I can show you. But this is like a really fun, like ice is fun. So we'll talk about ice in a minute. So forgive my hands, but it's just me. Can you see it's a skull? Pretty. <laughs> Sorry for the, some deadly drinks, but it's fun when it stares back at you. So for the drink itself, these are some of the things we'll talk about that you should have on your bar cart for sure. And here's some other things. So this is the Applejack. Oops. So we have a couple of jiggles of them. And they have all the orchards right over there. I'm going to make two because I think it's so good and I'm, I'm going to want to have another one that goes with it. Usually I make two drinks per Art of the Garnish party. And then you have... Let me just double check on this. Then you're gonna have one of the caramel. Roberta's in the Catskills. Roberta's in the Catskills. You know what she told me? We didn't have our cocktail party last night, um, but um, that they have the to-go drinks now in New York, like you can like order them. And um, I saw that Governor Murphy just did the same thing in New Jersey. So, you know, he's, you know they're these and then like four shakes so i'm gonna do eight this time because i'm done one two three four five what's six. that these are the bitters chocolate bitters that's why i'm saying the flavor of applejack the apples pair so nicely with caramel and chocolate and things i'll talk about the food in a minute because so now we have our stir so unlike with the shaking so i just want to stir this a little bit because it's going to go on top Roberta's having um, whiskey sours tonight, and I love that because that was always like a very popular drink in the, like weddings, my mother's bridge club. It was like such a fun drink. And then I think it got adulterated for a little bit. So this is the sparkling water, so you don't want to be shaking that. So this is the apple sparkling water. And then the garnish. So this is the beautiful apple the apple leaves and i think i'm just gonna float this on the side for a minute and i'll talk about ice can you see bill let me get mm -hmm. my hands out of the way okay. in the book the garnish that i put on it is the cinnamon sticks because cinnamon and caramel go so well also and i think i'll just float this in here so you can see it okay got your skull in there so before I go into the story also um, I want to say like these big cubes these are terrific for I think for a lot of brown drinks whiskey drinks very big and then we got this some years ago Bill show you down here ice is like so important so you don't want to have like really great spirits and liquors and things like that um, and have crummy bad ice a lot of times people have in the refrigerator and it's just adulterated with some 
<laughs> fragrances, smells of things that are in the refrigerator. But this is an opal maker, and we had to wait to get one until they were going to go public or something. I think GE owns them now, but you can see the ice. It makes these little nuggets, very chewable, but it's like a snow cone. So um, I think this Great is... Great for margaritas. Yeah. My mother loves margaritas, too. So I was trying to say, Roberta had margaritas last night. I was asking her if she returned from Margaritaville yet. <laughs> and um, it was funny because Gina and Ted, Gigi and Ted, mm, very nice. He has the caramel, the apple, cinnamon. Another thing that you can use um, are these like kind of edible swizzle sticks. I have them in many flavors, but this one's toffee. You can see you can stick it right into the drink. Um, I have them in orange, cinnamon, so you can stick it in. It kind of melts in. It's like a nice candy dish flavor for it. And the, I was starting to say Roberta had the margaritas, and then Jean and Ted had margaritas also, so I was wondering what was in the air. Um, uh, Jean and Ted used the lilac and it's like, like simple syrup from last week to put into their uh, margaritas. So we're playing Miles Davis. I don't know if you can hear, but it's very nice um, cocktail music. So one thing I did want to talk about also is that um, one of my dear friends from school in Switzerland, Sharon, and I hope I say her maiden name right, Chichoski, um, she said that, you know, my husband and I, we really love wine, but, um, I guess she loves me too, but she she brought out her, uh, she said we bought a bar cart and uh, on the bar cart is just their wine and then their, and then my books on it. So you can see here. Thank you, Sharon, for sending in the photo. That is so sweet. So I'm gonna do a posting on my blog, Garden Glamour, about, um, and here's what Roberta she did her little tablescape with the, this was earlier in the season with the forsythia and the, um, and my book. So I appreciate that very much. Keep sending them in. You can see here in the garden, we're kind of down to what I think is getting to be the last of the lilacs, which is surprising because um, it's still relatively early. I mean, they peak at Mother's Day, but geez, that wasn't that long ago. Then in addition, um, they're starting to go the, uh, I love those, um, viburnum and they're starting also. Um, but you can see the azaleas are just absolutely gorgeous. And then the tulips, where did they go? Are they still upstairs? <laughs> upstairs. I'll have to show you later in a picture, but they're getting to be so blousy. And I just love that. You know, there's a, uh, something I read not too long ago and it said decadence is really just opulence with an expiration date and I think that's very true so I love that sort of you know overall blousy look to it but um, I think you know with people you know I love cocktail culture and everything that goes with it so you know if you've been watching us each week I talk about those things but they're just so beautiful it's like jewelry um, you know and I always say Cocktails, you know, you can't have a doggy bag for them. You have to drink them. <laughs> can't take them home, but maybe now with Corona, you can have a to-go. Um, but it has, cocktails have a time of day, a happy hour. They have the rings, cocktail rings. Uh, they have fashion, you know, a cocktail dress. So it's just so much, you know, a part of our culture. And I think when people look back at um, accessorizing a bar cart, you know, you look back to the glamorous times um, from the Roaring Twenties, and so now we started off in the Soaring Twenties, and maybe not the way we intended. But you look to the glamour of the cocktail time, it's a seduction to make a drink, to make a cocktail. It takes time. You don't want to just be, you know, we love wine too, believe me, we um, subscribe to wine still sold out, and you know, we're constantly uh, exploring new wines. We loved our trips to Napa and Sonoma, but it's different for a drink. You don't want to just open it and pour it. You know, there's everything that goes with the making of it. People are watching you making it, stirring it. That's what's 
part of the fascination of going out to a bar besides the company you know that you have so um, I think when you have the things that go with it it just makes it more indulgent it's a luxury you can do at home so you can scale up or down like I said I'll post the tips but some of the things you want to have are necessarily you know bottle openers you know you want to have your jiggers your measures I always love this hot darn strainer <laughs> it has a cute little face to it you have your shakers you know and I've upgraded escalate as we go along your um, ice bucket this one I really I just love because you can make your own um, seltzer water you know the like a club soda so um, Bill just refilled it the other day you know, I'll use one of Gigi's Gina's bottoms up and glasses but you just fill this you put the water in it and it has like a what like a watch it watch it there you go and so you can have you can make it at home you don't have to buy you know sometimes there's too much cane sugar and um you know corn syrup and things like that in some of the mixers so try not to go for those you can make things at home um so I'll detail all those things that can go into your bar cart and really make it fun fun for you just make it much more of a luxury but I was also reading a story in the news not too long ago I guess a couple weeks ago she was saying how you know she wanted to buy a desk for her home office and uh, she had no problem you know going to a website and you know picking it out and getting it shipped but when she looked for a bar cart it went it was like a 1950s kind of a rattan not too it was kind of flimsy looking but it went for over fifteen hundred dollars more than five times the asking price so it shows you the depth of interest that people are having in cocktail culture and in bar carts um, glasses hugely important obviously you know that I love good crystal so this again is our wedding crystal it's that it's German it's Vesta it's beautiful it has flower you know plants on it so we were always in love with that and um, it's not just cocktails that you can um, source from their Instagram account or uh, I believe they have a have a website um, so again going back to the drink that's today I'll show you in the book it's called cannot tell a lie and I posted it earlier just so you could see the page but here <clears throat> you see I featured it with the cinnamon stick and the apple um, you know originally so but I want to tell you the story of it because everything has a story and that's why I picked it right so um, in the book it says since in 1698 Alexander Laird emigrated from County Fife, Scotland to America, where he eventually settled in Monmouth County, New Jersey, the Garden State. Believed to be a distiller in his homeland, William applied his skills to apples, which were the most abundant natural resource in the area. This led to the production of Applejack for his own use, as well as his friends and neighbors. Prior to 1760, George Washington wrote to the Laird family, requesting their Applejack recipe. Entries appear in Washington's diary in the 1760s referring to the production of cider spirits. As a revolutionary soldier serving under George Washington, Robert Laird and his family provided the troops with Applejack. So I thought that... Marianne's uh, watching. Hi Marianne, my Academy Award winning cousin. How are you darling? <laughs> So you might say, I was thinking that Applejack sort of uh, saved the colonies, all right? So we need our spirits to keep us up. And here, um, I just want to share with you a little bit of, in the book, there's, let me go back. Every drink has the photo, the little head notes of the story, the recipe ingredients, and then the garnish or the finishing touches. So everyone has it and you you know drinks don't have to be codified like even like Tom Sabasco his um, uh, Bloody Mary you can you can change it up you can garnish the way you want too many times gin and tonic has to have a lime or you know a martini has to have a certain you know kind of olive but you don't need to do that you can you know sort of get creative that's what I do with the jewelry pins or you know different kind of seasonal uh, garnishes but also there's throughout the book ways that you can create the garnishes 
So here's the fan garnish and that's what the apple is. So I'll read it to you. So the fan garnish is really good for strawberries, apples, they're especially good for garnishes. You place the washed and dried fruit on a cutting board and using a paring knife, you make several thin slices in the fruit without cutting through the top. So just almost to the top part of it, leaving the slices attached to the hull or the skin at the top. Then you're gonna pull apart those slices so they fan out, okay? And yeah. then you're gonna float on top of the drink. So maybe we could show this a little bit. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, maybe not so much. So, um, the food pairings that I would put with this, because it has so many flavor values to it, the profile of caramel, the brandy, the chocolate, a little bit of ginger, but I, I put it with like caramel corn cups. Um, I think Quaker makes some. There's probably many others also. But you can fill them with fresh apple butter. Uh, one of my childhood girlfriends and I used to make apple butter for Christmas gifts every year. Um, but uh, you can find them at the green markets and I'm sure online now, but you can fill them. You can also put out some Godiva or any other salted caramel chocolates, which are really terrific. Sliced apples, just make sure you rub them with the lemon because if you put apples out to eat and the air hits it, you know, they'll start to turn brown, but the lemons will um, mitigate that. And you can sprinkle some uh, the cinnamon also, which makes it taste good. You know, a lot of people don't know that cinnamon, um, it's one of my favorite spices, but it comes from the bark of a tree. So they shave, shave it off and make cinnamon from that. So cinnamon sticks and going to the, it's from Southeast Asia. So that's why a lot, oftentimes you'll see um, cinnamon from Vietnam and places like that. But anyway, when you have those kind of tasty treats, they sort of echo that chocolatey, caramelly taste, you know, that's in the drink. So it's just like when you're preparing food, we say what grows together goes together. I think the same thing when you're preparing a cocktail, you want to have the flavors, you know, that sort of mix and blend with each other. Um, some fun compositions when you're doing things like a tablescape, if you're putting them out for the cocktails, um, I thought it would be fun, like playing off the um, apple jack thing. You could put like um, the game jacks. I mean, I guess you have to be of a certain age now to know what that is, but the ball and jacks is, it's a really fun game. <laughs> it might be really good during a pandemic to be able to play that too. Um, I think putting peanuts out, you know, is always, an excellent cocktail. Um, I like peanuts, almonds. Thank you, Roberta, for the almond oil. Oh, that was hilarious. So just to digress for a moment, but Roberta sent me this excellent hair product. It's almond. She got it, the idea from an Indian friend of hers, but it smelled so good. And when I put on, I just kept putting it on, putting it on, putting it on. And then I was, it was just like a greasy pop. <laughs> And she said, oh no, you only have to put on a drop. So I learned my lesson, but it was intoxicating to put on, so thank you. And then Carolyn sent me those crazy beautiful candles that are like lotus blossoms that come up, so I can't wait to use them for Bill's birthday, June 4th, Gemini, and for Mother's birthday. And then I got this other great gift from Ian Young and Tom. Can you zoom in, Bill? So Kinka is a store shop that they're going to be opening in the Chelsea area. And um, uh, Kinka has, it's a very cute name. And I forget what it means now. That's so embarrassing. Ian Young, if you're on, just text in what it means. But um, it's about the joy of plants or something. I mean, we talk about it when the name, I just thought it was so adorable. But um, it's going, she's going to curate the best. And Ian Young is a terrific horticulturist landscape architect. I was privileged to have her work with me at Duchess Designs for many years and I, she's the one who did the Japanese tea party here that you saw. I posted some of the pictures. So she's going to have some very unique gifts that all center around um, plants and uh, her husband will have the shop. They're serial entrepreneurs. They have E-N-I puzzles, E-N-I puzzles, so you can look them up to her father invented that. It's kind of a um, Rubik's Cube but better. What? Oh, I thought Bill was trying to tell me something. So, uh, so that's something to look forward to. And um, I know things are sort of looking up, you know, um, overall. So I hope for continued um, good health for everyone. 
one thing I forgot to add also is that if you want with the composition or some other um, uh, garnishes for this, you know those little lady apples, they're so cute, you see them um, in sort of very tiny, like you can use those too, you can skewer those and use them with this. Um, I think sometimes Cracker Jacks is, you know, really fun to be able to, to highlight also. So, cheers. And I think we're almost at the time, right? Oh my gosh, it's so perfect. So does anybody have any questions or thoughts? Are we good? So this was a big week for us. We had a lot of big plantings for garden clients. We had so many, so many annuals and plants to put in the containers. We had lots of edibles. I got out all my bags of edibles. I'm trying to do gardening here for us. I'll share the pictures later, but we, Darren that works for me on the team Duchess, we put on um, sod out here in the front. And um, it's just, you know, that crazy time. You know, my friend Ken Drew says anybody can do spring, but really it takes a lot, a lot of work to be able to keep up and have that sort of rolling transition, um, you know, going to get us into uh, the summertime. So I'm enjoying um, providing you and sharing with you some of the fun, interesting things that come out of the garden that you can use in your drinks and cocktails that are right there for you. So next week, um, I have I've been making um, brewing, I guess I should say, a dandelion bitters, and so that'll be ready that I can use in a real garden for glass drink. And then we'll look forward to some edible pastas and things like that going forward. So if anybody has any ideas or thoughts or questions, just let me know. Otherwise, I uh, look forward to seeing you next Saturday. And be safe, be healthy. Cheers.